In the ongoing, indeed unending, probe of Russian involvement in last year's election, according to leaks from unnamed sources, Special Counsel Robert Mueller has a paneled a grand jury that will have the power to issue indictments stemming from the investigation, assuming there are any. Jonathan Turley is a professor at George Washington University Law School, and he joins us tonight. Professor, how big a deal is this? Well, it's a big deal in the sense that it's going into a new stage. A grand jury is the most powerful tool of a prosecutor. It does two things. It both investigates potential crimes and then decides whether to indict for those crimes. The investigation part is a heavy tool for prosecutors to use. You pull in witnesses, you pull in documents, and you put people under oath. And if they say something misleading or false, you suddenly have a great deal of leverage over them with a potential criminal charge. Yes. So this is a very significant significant move and you know it's hard to look at this as good news it's sort of like being in a castle and watching your neighbor building siege machines and catapults it's never a good thing obviously your relationship is not the best here I think that you're going to see a lot of people brought into this grand jury they're going to have to go on the record and we've had a problem so far coming out of the Trump administration of a consistent narrative this is where the stakes go very very high uh, people need to be able to maintain what happened, to be clear about it, and when they don't know, they need to say they don't know. I'm watching this and I keep thinking a grand jury to aid in an investigation about Russian collusion, but it's not really about that. So here's the lead of the CNN story on this, and I don't typically quote CNN, but I suspect they've got pretty good sources in the special counsel's office, <laughs> put it mildly. Quote, quote, federal investigators exploring whether Donald Trump's campaign colluded with Russian spies have seized on Trump and his associates' financial ties to Russia as one of the most fertile avenues for moving their probe forward, according to people familiar with the investigation. The web of financial ties could offer a more concrete path toward potential prosecution than the broader and murkier questions of collusion in the campaign. So basically they're just saying we're not going to get him on the collusion stuff, so we're going to make up an entirely new investigation into the finances of his family, his associates in Russia. Can you do that? You can. I mean, the problem is the special counsel was given a remarkably broad mandate from Rosenstein at, at Department of Justice. It's very, very general. And they're a lot like the EPA used to do when it, it defined navigable waters as any pond that connected right. to a larger... A vernal pool. Exactly. Right. Total. So you do the same thing here. That is, as long as these arose during the investigation, these crimes arose or were discovered, the special counsel can investigate them. And that's a serious problem for Trump. We've never had a president with the type of transactional portfolio that he has, that his family has. And when you go through that, if they find illegality, it could be a serious problem. Well, sure. I mean, anyone who has any financial transaction at all in Russia who buys a club sandwich and a Diet Coke in <laughs> Moscow is facing some kind of problem just because it's such a sketchy country. So well, why, would, yeah. why would they allow, what would be the justification for a mandate this broad, that it could include anything? Well, I was surprised by the mandate. It didn't actually refer to any specific crime or criminal allegation, it referred to possible Russian tampering with the election, and then put in this extra language of proceed with anything that arises during your investigation. You can't have anything broader than that. And special counsel investigations are like a gas in a closed room. If you have a large room, the gas will expand evenly in that room. This is a very large room. And on top of it, you have uh, Mueller, who recently brought in a guy whose whole resume is basically financial fraud. This guy isn't about elections. He's not about right. any of this stuff. He's about pursuing financial fraud, and he's very good at it. So you've got 16 people here who, and, and a special counsel armed to the teeth to look at financial fraud, and I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to look into all of these transactions. Kind of amazing uh, that we're here. Jonathan Choi, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Doctor.